Hey folks, David Molnar here. Welcome back to the free video series on Aperture. In this lesson, I wanna talk about how focal length affects your aperture. All right, so the first thing I wanna make clear is that 50 millimeters is what you and I see with our eyes. It's not zoomed in and it's not zoomed out. Okay, so what I mean by that is if you have a 50 millimeter lens, that is exactly what you and I see with our eyes. If you take a 24 to 70 millimeter camera and you switch it to where it says 50 millimeters, okay, so it's kind of right between the 24 and 70, that is what you and I see with our eyes. On a full frame camera like the 6D series or the 5D series for Canon or like the Nikon D850, those are full frame cameras. We could talk about crop sensor and full frame at a different time in a different lesson. But on a full frame camera, 50 millimeters is what you and I see with our eyes. If we go to 49 millimeters, we have now zoomed out a little bit and we have gone more wide angle. Now, 49 is not very wide angle, okay? But the moment we go to 51 millimeters, we've started to zoom in a little bit and have a little bit more compression, okay? Get a little bit closer to our subjects, okay? So, if you zoom all the way out to, let's say, 24, like this lens does, if you're all the way zoomed out to 24, you've got a pretty wide angle lens. Not super wide, it's not fisheye yet, but it's pretty wide and it will start stretching out your subjects a little bit. If we zoom all the way into, let's say 70, on this uh, lens right here, it's brought us closer to our subjects, okay? If you zoom into 100 or 200, you've gotten even closer. And if you've zoomed into 500 millimeters, then you're looking at the birds across the parking lot or something. Okay, so 50 millimeters is what you and I see with our eyes. It's not zoomed in and it's not zoomed out. 51 starts zooming in, 49 starts zooming out, okay? So if you remember from the depth of field lesson, the size of the hole, right, the aperture size, the f-stop, affects how blurry the background is. And if you remember the larger size hole, which of course is a smaller number, okay? Let's say this is f1.8, this is 2.8, 4.0, that larger, hole, which is the smaller number, will create a more blurry background, okay? But that significantly changes as you change the focal length. All right, let me give you uh, an illustration. I'm gonna show you a bunch of pictures here. All right, so this first picture that I wanna show you is at 16 millimeters. Now this is super wide, as you can tell, super wide, and the background is barely blurry at all. Now we are at F 4.0. You might think or suspect that at f4.0 that we have somewhat of a blurry background, but in this image, pretty much everything is crisp, right? There is no real shallow depth of field in this image, but watch this change as we change the focal length. So we're gonna stay at 4.0 for all of these pictures. We're not gonna change the aperture. The only thing we're gonna do is to start zooming in. So in this next image, you see 24 millimeters, and we're closer, we're closer to our subject. It's still decently wide angle, but we're closer to our subject, and the background is still pretty decently crisp. You know, maybe it's a little bit softer than it was before. As we zoom in at 28 millimeters, you start seeing the background be, you know, still still decent, but, but a little bit softer. Uh, obviously, we're getting closer to our subject. 35 millimeters, the background is not quite as crisp anymore. 50 millimeters, you're starting to see that background kind of get a little bit more significantly blurred, right? So, and remember, 50 millimeters is what you and I see with our eyes. So when we have our beautiful model here, Ali Sutton, standing in front of us, that looks like the same distance that I was away from her when I was taking the picture. 70 millimeters, I'm starting to zoom in closer. She all of a sudden appears closer to the camera than what it looked like when I was standing there. And you notice the background, remember we're still at f4.0, you're noticing the background is getting significantly more blurred. You're starting to see that bokeh uh, show up, right? In the next uh, image we have 105 millimeters, okay? That background is getting even more blurred, but we have not changed our aperture. We're getting a shallower depth of field, right? Um, but we haven't changed our aperture. So, so the f4.0 is having a much different effect depending on what focal range or where you are, how much or how little you are zoomed in. In this next image, we see 150 millimeters and you start seeing that background be almost completely nondescript. You almost don't even know what it is back there. It looks beautiful and the separation really is incredible. It pulls Ali Sutton way out of, uh, way, way off the background and it does a great job at separating her. In this last image, we have it all the way zoomed in to 200 millimeters. Now, of course, we're still at 4.0, but the background is almost 100% nondescript. It's completely blurred out and what I would affectionately call butter, 
All right, it looks beautiful. The bokeh is gorgeous. You see those round circles with the specular highlights. It is absolutely stunning, okay? So what does all this mean? What this means is that the aperture, you know, what you think of the aperture, uh, what it looks like when it's at 4.0 or at 1.0 or at 2.0 or at f22 significantly changes as you change your focal range. As you zoom in or zoom out, the effect of the aperture as it pertains to depth of field will significantly change as you zoom in or zoom out because there are three main factors that affect depth of field. The first one, of course, is aperture, which we talked about. That larger hole creates a more blurry background. That smaller hole, right, creates a more crisp background. But even if you have a very small hole and you are zoomed way in at three or 400 millimeters, okay, even if you're shooting at F22, which is that little pinhole, right, your background is still gonna look like a shallow depth of field. You're still not gonna be able to see them, the mountains and stuff off in the distance because your focal length is definitely a big factor into affecting that depth of field and significantly changes the effect that your aperture actually has. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that lesson on focal lengths and how they affect the aperture. In the next lesson, we're gonna be talking about some recommended starting places for you to set your aperture um, in various situations, like at night, on cloudy days, um, or indoors or outdoors.